Last week, the annual league meeting was in Orlando, Florida. The owners were there. The coaches were there. This guy was there. What is Jerry Jones writing in his notepad? Looks like some important cowboy shit. Yeah! The owners voted to eliminate the hip drop tackle. I will talk about that for way too long. New rule. People have to stop pooping on the spring league if the NFL is going to keep adopting rules from it. That's right. NFL games are going to look a bit different this season thanks to a new kickoff format ripped directly from the XFL. I'll explain that so simple a child could understand. Plus, Deion Sanders is plotting his son's draft, and there's a book about Aaron Rodgers on the way. If only I could read, I would be so excited! Welcome to Shut Up Football. I am Jeff Stoltzfus, that's Kevin, and when it comes to the NFL, this is Barely News. Deion Sanders said there are certain teams his Colorado players won't play for in the NFL. But I know I want them to go. So there's certain cities that ain't, ain't going to happen. This is going to be an Eli. Pulling an Eli is a reference to Eli Manning, dictating prior to the draft which teams he would and wouldn't play for. Not to be confused with pulling a Brett Favre, which is like Ocean's Eleven, except instead of casinos, it's charities. Coach Prime said he doesn't want his son Shador playing for any team that plays in cold weather, which is going to be a tough feat considering they play each other. Miami's not a cold weather city, but the Dolphins froze their blowholes off January 13th in Arrowhead. When you like me, you can do that. Aaron Rodgers has a book coming out. Found in human flesh and inked in blood. Actually, it's a biography about Rodgers. Despite being unauthorized, the author was able to sit down with Rodgers last month for a two-hour interview. Who wants to read a book about Aaron Rodgers? That is a great question. The book is called Out of Darkness, The Mystery of Aaron Rodgers. It's said to be nearly 400 pages. What is he delivering, a ring to Mordor? I'll just wait for the movie. The book should be out later this year. All right, let's get to the rules. First off, don't believe what the media is selling you. The hip drop tackle has not been eliminated. The swivel hip drop tackle has been eliminated after a vote at the spring owners meeting. The new rule states that it is a foul if the player uses the following technique to bring a runner to the ground, grabs the runner with both hands or wraps the runner with both arms and unweights himself or herself, pretty presumptuous league, by swiveling or dropping his hips and or lower body, landing on and trapping the runner's leg or legs at or below the knee. And cop and anchovies, and orangutans, and breakfast cereals, and fruit bats. The penalty for which is 15 yards and an automatic first down. As rules analyst Dean Blandino stated, the officials on the field will need to see all three elements to throw a flag, grab the opponent, unweight, and land on the back of the legs, and swivel, I guess, so four elements really. If all elements are not met, there is no penalty. So if they grab with just one hand, or there's no swivel, maybe it's a pivot or rotation, or they don't unweight themselves. Maybe the player has a series of balloons tied to him in some sort of Disney Pixar's up situation, or they don't have hips. No penalty. NFL executive Jeff Miller said the hip drop tackle was used 230 times last season. And then he said it doesn't get used very often. The players didn't want it, but they got it anyway. That would be like going out to eat with a bunch of friends and everybody agrees to get a plate of fries. But instead, you order a round of octopus. That's eight arms, three hearts, and apparently more brains than the NFL owners have collectively. Nobody wants to get hurt, but the issue players have with the penalty is that it's entirely subjective by the refs. Yeah, these guys, the guys and ladies, what's up? That can't figure out what a catch is. You just keep adding infinity stones to their gauntlet. No one man We've already established on this show that NFL officiating accuracy has been on the decline, in part to the fact that it's getting harder to find good refs. The best refs already took off for cushy gigs in climate-controlled studios that come with their own fluffer and a bottle of scotch. I want to make it clear, I'm not for the hip drop tackle. I'm not in the pocket of big hip. American football has historically gone through a plethora of changes prior to there even being an NFL. What bothers me about the rule change is they didn't listen to the players. 
The NFLPA was against this change. Current offensive and defensive players were vocal. They were against this change. They should be the ones voting on this. I don't want to indulge in conspiracy theories, but it does feel weird to claim you're making this move for player safety when you're also disregarding the players' opinions on the matter and disregarding things they actually want, like grass instead of turf, or forcing them into quick turnarounds like doubling up Wednesday games just because it's Christmas. This penalty could potentially also lead to more scoring, which the NFL wants. According to the NFL's competition committee chairman, scoring has dipped since 2020, down each year since. They want more points. More points means more excitement, more viewers, and more money. That's not just my opinion. They literally said they expect the new kickoff rules to affect drives by three to five yards and lead to more scoring. As with any new rules, there will be unintended consequences. Obviously, we don't know what those will be, but one might be a delaying gameplay. This ruling is coming from the refs, which means not only human error, but debate. We saw way too much of that last season. The league just okayed replay for roughing the passer and intentional grounding. It's possible that a hip drop tackle might be reviewable someday too. More commercial breaks makes for more ad revenue, but it doesn't improve the viewing experience for the fan. I already know which beer and erectile drugs to buy. I have brand loyalty. When are they gonna combine those two, by the way? Wait, is that what Liquid Death is? It wasn't the only rule change that passed, just the only one that got people in a tizzy. Coaches now have a third challenge if they got one of the first two right. You can now replay roughing the passer and intentional groundhogs. Say goodbye, surprise onside kicks. Now you have to announce that you're gonna go for one. In fact, there's a lot of change when it comes to kickoffs. Let's break it all down. The kickoff comes from the 35 yard line. There's no change there. The rest of the kicking team will line up on the opponent's 40 yard line. They can't move until the ball hits the ground or a player. The receiving team sets up between their own 30 and 35 yard line. Those five yards are the setup zone, AKA the taint of kickoffs. And there has to be at least nine receiving team players in the taint. Most likely they'll have two returners back to receive the ball. The play begins when the ball is caught or hits the ground in the landing zone, which is between the 20 yard line and the end zone. It's like a reverse red zone. I know we're pushing player safety here, but this is a missed opportunity for zones everywhere, not to call this the danger zone. Danger zone! If for some reason the kick fails to reach the landing zone, the receiving team gets it at their 40 yard line. Same as a kickoff that goes out of bounds. So that's the end of squib kicks. Downing the kickoff in the end zone brings it out to the 30, and onside kicks are only permitted in the fourth quarter. Explaining it sounds more complicated than it actually is. In practice, it doesn't feel out of place with the rest of the game. This was only approved for a one-year trial period. Like a classic drug deal or an Adobe trial membership, you get a taste for free and then you're hooked. I'm all for this change. Kickoffs were getting pretty pointless, and I'd rather have a change to them than have them eliminated. They also took the annual head coach's photo last week in what I assume is one of Florida's finest cemeteries. And to make it fun, I'm now going to guess who these men are based solely on their appearance. Butter surrogate, an inventor of the fashion line cruise ship camouflage. Stock photo of a serial killer. Sweet baby Ray, barbecue gigolo. Professional assassins, the testicle brothers. The only man who knows what Sasquatch meat tastes like. Before and after. Tennis pro at your mom's country club that she is way too excited about. Director of not-for-profit porn. First person to win the Westminster Dog Show. Head referee at a tan line competition for seniors. Bouncer at a Chuck E. Cheese. What are you gonna do? His dad owns the dealership. Charlie in the Chocolate Fountain. Grave digger for a clown college. Resting dentist face. That kid from the back of the milk carton. Lenny from the Simpsons. Gangster nerd rapper, run DND. Kmart, the man. Die hard in a TJ Maxx. Zach Wilson. Thank you so much for watching Shut Up Football. Please leave your comments below. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and say hi to your mom for me. We'll catch you next time. Peace! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy.